If you have a corgi that's pulling you here, there, and everywhere on the lead, that is not a situation you wanna find yourself in, and today we're gonna to help you with that. Welcome back to the Fenrir Corgi Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. We are dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the corgi and then how to become a high level canine leader so you can raise your very own. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future upload. Getting a corgi is a very, very exciting time and something you'll definitely want to train them is how to walk to heal as you don't want them pulling all the time when you're out for a walk as it can be very stressful. So today we're going to be tuning into a web now the canine behaviorist and founder of FenroCanineLeaders.com, Will, has recorded all about how to get your dog to walk to heel. So welcome back to another quick fire webinar. Now, whether you're working as a dog trainer and you're helping people teach their dogs to walk beautifully to heel on a loose lead, or maybe you're watching this as an owner and you want to take your skill set and knowledge to a higher level, then this webinar is for you. Now, walking a dog to heel is one of the most enjoyable experiences that you or your clients can have with their dog. Now, depending on the size of their dog, it's also, for me, incredibly important to teach people to have a dog that walks to heel so that it can just make the experience fun and enjoyable but also safe for yourself for your dog for other dogs and for other people so walking to heel is incredibly important yeah it's something that so many people struggle with and just simply give up on and it doesn't need to be difficult so that is exactly what we're going to talk about today now walking to heel like I say it doesn't need to be difficult the theory and the principle is quite straightforward and I'm going to break that down step by step for you in this quick fire webinar now when you're actually demonstrating how to do this we use utilize this through our perfect puppy course we've got tons of modules helping people teach their dogs to walk to heel and the more intricacies of it which obviously is where you can go into more detail but when we're talking about kind of the macro theory we really don't need to overcomplicate it and it's people overcomplicating it which is why so many people give up on it and that is what we're going to really focus on in this webinar now before you dive into actually working with the dog or helping your clients work with their dogs exercise is always so important it's something that i bang on about all of the time because not only is it amazing for a variety of different issues more from a canine behaviorist point of view but when it comes to training a dog exercise is also a huge part of that as well as a tired dog is just so much easier to work with than a really hyperactive distracted dog that just wants to go out and play and burn off that energy now when we're talking about very young puppies we have to find that balance we don't want to absolutely like blast them with exercise so that they're falling asleep but we don't want that kind of crazy hyperactivity that comes with puppies finding that middle balance is always nice so as always exercise 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 it's the most important part of owning a dog let's get that right first and then you're just going to make the task so much easier so then we just simply need to build the foundation now whenever we're building a foundation when it comes to dog training we want to do it in as a low distraction environment as possible we lay that rock solid foundation of whatever it is that we're trying to teach so that we can then build up on that foundation and scale and grow as we move with that behavior that we've now taught the dog so when we're teaching a puppy to walk to heal that foundation layer we want to do inside with as little distractions as possible turn everything off make sure the kids aren't in the room make sure there's no other dogs in the room we want to have that dog laser focused the task here is that we need to associate walking with being on our left hand side that's all we want it's just simply letting them know that this term if we're using the term heel means i want you here on my left hand side regardless of whether we're standing still whether we're moving whether we're turning directions it doesn't matter but i want you here on my left hand side and we're going to achieve that with no lead whatsoever to start with and we're going to follow a very basic law mark and reinforce based procedure that is very typical of teaching any dog a, a new trick so we're going to get the dog's attention using a food reward a lure and then we're going to lure them into position they're going to follow the nose we're going to lure them down to our left hand side and when they're in the desired position we're going to mark the behavior so we've lured them into the right behavior then we mark the behavior with the term heel 
and then we give them access to the food and lots of praise there we go so we're going to stand in one spot we're going to lure them into that position we're going to mark it with heel and then we're going to praise reinforce and give them access to the food then while standing on that same spot we can turn 90 degrees one way 90 degrees the other way 180 degrees 270 360 constantly while luring marking and reinforcing the dog of being in that desired behavior we want to build that rock solid concept of this word heel means i want you on my left hand side that's all i want you to do it's a very simple process and this is where people overcomplicate heel walking and getting a nice good casual heel we don't need competition level heel for companion dogs we just want a dog that will walk nicely on our left hand side and this is building up that rock solid foundation then we simply move on to scaling the complexity and scaling the distraction. So if we've been standing in one direction and moving different directions and luring the dog into the right position and marking and reinforcing it, maybe we're going to start taking one step forward, lure, mark, reinforce. Maybe we take five steps forward, lure, mark, reinforce, followed by a turn, followed by another turn, followed by a walk, still with very low distraction, but again, building up that comprehension of whether I'm in one spot or whether I'm moving, I want you here on my left hand side if you do that for me then good things are going to happen excellent then we can start building up that complexity with more steps more turns and at this stage when we know that our puppy that our dog has that rock solid foundation of the term heel means be on my left hand side at that stage is when i like to add a lead to the equation then we're going to carry on drilling the same things we want to associate that lead with being here on my left hand side too many people get a lead and they just ruin the relationship with the lead from day one by slapping them on it letting them bounce all over the place go wherever they want and then they get confused why the dog is confused that now you don't want them to do that you want them to walk nicely to heal but we've spent the last six months being able to go anywhere we want on the lead we want to have that rock solid foundation and then that rock solid comprehension and that link that heal that lead means heel, and heel means be on my left-hand side. And we scale the complexity, we scale the distractions. We start to do it outside in a low distraction environment. We then start to do it in a very quiet road, on a pavement or sidewalk, then slightly busier roads. Then we might want to do it where there's other people around or dogs at a far distance. And then we slowly start bringing up the distraction level till over time, weeks after weeks and months after months, we can do this same process whilst walking through Times Square in New York if we wanted to. It's just about scaling the complexity, scaling the distraction, and setting our dogs up for success. If we find that the distraction level is too high, we take a step back and we start reinforcing and retraining at that earlier stage, really nail that down, and then we layer up again. That's why we built that rock solid layer of foundation, and then we just build on that. If we jump straight up here and it all crumbles, well, we've still got this rock solid foundation, so let's start back here and build up on that slowly. It's about patience, it's about consistency, but it's about expecting high expectations from your dog. Not thinking, oh, it's okay, I'm gonna let them go wherever they want, because then they're associating the lead and the collar or the harness, whatever tools you're using, with them being able to make their own decisions and go wherever they want. That isn't the essence of a calm, consistent leader. A calm, consistent leader is in charge. I am going I am leading the way and I want you simply to be on my left hand side following me, looking up to me for guidance and direction. If you do that, amazing, positive, brilliant things are going to happen and we're just going to set them up for success, not up for failure and we're going to set high boundaries, high expectations and we're going to build up to it slowly but surely. While we're socialising our dogs in the big wide world, we don't need to necessarily put them on a lead and a collar and let them have free roam. We can carry them while they're young until they've had their injections and then when we go out we can put them maybe on a long line so that we're not necessarily associating the short lead with being able to go where you want the long line means now you've got free access and free reign but when you're on this short lead that is our healing lead they're creating that association with okay i'm on this lead i know what that means that means i need to be on the left hand side of boss and if i'm there good things are going to happen and we're going to move if the dog pulls we're simply going to stop we're going to turn around we're going to lure them back into the right position turn around again and move forward if we find that the distractions are too high you failed not the dog you expected to 
too much too soon. So we're going to bring it back and slowly start to build it up, drilling it, working it every single day with incredible levels of consistency. That's how we achieve it. If you need more information, maybe if you're an owner, there'll be a link to the Perfect Puppy course down in the description box below where we do break this down in much more detail. But I hope that that gives you that kind of big overarching picture and principle to at least get you started. There you have it guys, some really useful information from Will there, all about how to get your corgi to walk to heel. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, get involved in the comments down below as we would love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell as we have two dedicated videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to see you in the next episode of the Fenrir Corgi Show.